Hello, my beautiful computer science students. Welcome to another lesson where I, Goldie, am going to take you through Unit 5, Lesson 2. Um, this lesson is titled Constructors, but in this lesson we are actually going to be constructing um, an entire class uh, from scratch based on some directions. Okay, um, I have my little buddy here who is also going to be learning all about uh, computer science as we go through. <laughs> Um, so let's get into it and take a look at our learning objectives today. Um, so we are going to be defining instance variables for the attributes that are going to be described um, in a situation. Um, and you'll also be seeing some comments used. We've been using comments um, since the beginning, um, but we just want to make sure we remember what comments are and how they might be able to help us in our program. So. We're going to write a complete class in this lesson, um, our own object creating class, and then we're going to see some coding examples of how we'll use this object creating class. Um, there is a question on the AP exam that asks you to complete a class from scratch, and they give you the situation, um, they'll give you sample code segments, um, everything so that you're able to write an entire object creating class uh, from scratch. Um, they'll tell you what constructors to make, how many methods you need, all of that good stuff. Um, the instructions I'm going to give you below um, actually give you more instructions than the AP exam will. Um, we'll definitely practice some AP exam questions in this unit, um, but for right now, since this is the first one we're kind of making together from scratch, I wanted to um, give you a little bit more, um, more detail and um, a little bit more help with this and then we'll move into some of the harder stuff a little bit later on. Okay, So the class you're going to make is called Swim Event. That's going to simulate a person swimming in a 25 yard pool for, um, for a swim competition. So you're going to build a Swim Event class that keeps track of um, the position in completing the event. So Swim Event is your object, okay? And it and we've always said objects represent something in the real world. A swim event is a physical, tangible thing, not like dog is, um, but a swim event is um, an idea. A uh, I don't want to say tangible idea, that sounds redundant, but it's going to be an idea um, that occurs in the real world. Okay. So first, the variables. So we're going to have three instance variables here. The first one is a string called event name that keeps track of what event you're going to be swimming. Event yards is going to be an integer that keeps track of how many yards you're going to be swimming. So it gives example of the four types it's going to be um, when you're swimming. And then the yard swim, which keeps track of the current number of laps you have swim. Or I say laps, but current number of yards that you um, that you have swim. So it starts off as zero, and it cannot exceed the number of yards needed for the event. Right. So if you're swimming the freestyle 50, you're not going to swim 100 yards in the freestyle 50. Right. You're going to swim maximum 50 yards, and then you're going to stop. <laughs> so that's what yard swim is going to be. So three instance variables. You're going to have a default constructor, and those instructions tell you what each of those instance variables is going to get set equal to. And then you're going to have one parameter constructor that sets event name and event yards to the values of the two parameters passed, and yard swim gets set to zero because when you create an event, you're, you haven't swam it yet. And then you're going to have three methods. Um, the first one is a void method called swim, which increments yard swim by 25 each time it is called. Um, swim, but this time it has yards. Okay, so notice those have the same name, but they accept different parameters. Okay, so that's an example of that method overloading um, that we briefly touched on in unit two, but we're definitely going to talk more about in this unit. Okay, so here's an example of it. And then the last method is actually going to return a Boolean called event completed. It's going to return true if yard swim is equal to event yards and false otherwise. Okay. So again, this is a very detailed um, instruction of what you'll actually be created, be creating, be created. Okay. So we're going to write the swim event below. So we're going to start off with our instance variables, right? The first one is string event name. Um, so we start off with our class, public class swim event. 
um, our class name is called swim, swim event and we have our one instance variable string event name and notice that that is private right we got to practice encapsulation here the next one is event yards now it gave us um, values that event yards can be and only those four values that's not something we have to worry about when we actually declare our event yards here Excuse me. And then the last one is yard swim, which is going to uh, keep track of currently how many yards you have swam. Um, but all of these variables, even though they have specific things that they need to be or can be, you are just declaring them at the top. Okay? They're all private. Make sure you have the correct type and then just the name itself. Next up is going to be the constructor. So the first one is the default constructor. Remember, constructors are public and they have to have the same name as the class itself. So this is going to be public swim event. And then it has those three instance variables set equal to those default values, freestyle, 50, and zero. And that's what that's going to look like. If you are copying this down in your set of notes, feel free to pause at any time if I'm moving too fast. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and move on to the parameter constructor. Parameter constructor also is public also has the same name as your class, but now it accepts parameters. And in this specific parameters, it accepts uh, two. Event name and event yards get set equal to um, some past values. Yard swim does not. So our parameter constructor looks like this. Public swim event. It accepts a string that represents the event name, and it accepts an integer that represent event yards. And I just use the uh, variables A and B. Remember, those can be anything because they're just placeholders for that assignment. Okay. All right. Most of the way done here. Um, now we have our methods. Okay. So these are just extra methods, um, behaviors, if you will, of the swim event. So the first one, swim. <laughs> it says it increments yard swim by 25 each time it is called. Now, if that was just there, we would have, um, it would just be yard swim, um, and it would be plus equals 25, right? We just increment yard swim by 25 every time it's called, okay? Um, but that's not the only thing the method does. The method does not allow yard swim to exceed event yards, okay? Again, you're not going to think of it logically, right, if you were given this situation, um, you would not want to swim more than your event calls for, okay? So because of this, we have to have an if statement, right? We have to check to make sure that when we add 25 to yard swim, it should be less than or equal to our event yards, okay? It cannot be, um, it cannot exceed it, excuse me. So what I did is I said if you add 25 to yard swim, if it was greater than event yards, right? So if you've already swam 50 and your event yard is supposed to be, or excuse me, if you've already swam 30 and your event yard is supposed to be 50, if you try adding 25 to it, well, you're going to exceed the event yards. You've gone too far. So if that happens, you want to basically max out your event yards. Okay? You want your yard swim to equal event yards because that's your stopping point. You're not going to swim more than that. If it's not greater than event yards, then you just want to add 25 to it and call it a day. Okay? So swim is in our, event, our swim event class, which means that we can um, access and modify yard swim uh, freely. Okay? So that's going to be your void swim. The other swim accepts a parameter of yards, and it's going to kind of do the same thing, um, except instead of 25 here, like our other class, it's actually going to be what our parameter is. So we're going to call that yards. So this code is going to look very similar to the last one. It's just going to have the word yards in place of 25. Okay. And our last one here event complete. That's going to return true if it's if yard swim is equal to event yards and false otherwise. So that's an if statement, right? If yard swim is equal is equivalent to event yards, return true. 
else return false. Okay. <laughs> so we're checking to see if those two integers are equal and if they are return true. If they're not, I just have the return false. But you could also have that in an else statement too. Okay. Our last piece here, I have some example code. Um, this code is um, obviously not in our swim events class. It's called public class tournament. And you see it's our, it has our main method here. Okay. So let's go through, we're going to trace through this and we're going to comment on uh, what's changed as the program is executed. So our first line, swim event Jesse equals new swim event. So we have a brand new um, object called Jesse that is being created using the default constructor of our swim event. So what happens, Jesse, the event name is going to be a freestyle. Event yards is 50, yard swim is zero. Okay, he gets those default values. I say he, whatever, Jesse. Jesse's going to be a he today, I guess. And then we have Lola. Okay, swim event Lola equals new swim event. Now she's being created with the um, parameter constructor. She's going to be swimming the breaststroke 200 and, and the parameter constructor, remember yard swim, um, was also zero. Okay, so here's her object. Okay, our first line. Okay, it says print to the council, jesse.com event completed. So Jesse's going to be our calling object. Um, and event completed checks to see if Jesse's yard swim is equal to his event yards. Okay, are those two equal? No, they are not, which is why the council is going to press um, present the word false. Okay, it's going to print the word false it's because event yards is not equal to yard swim. Now a few things are going to happen. Okay, first Jesse dot swim. Okay, so we're going to go to that swim method that has no parameters. Now in that swim method with no parameters, um, we take yard swim and we add 25 to it. And does 0 plus 25, is that greater than 50? It is not. So that means that yard swim just gets 25 added to it. Okay. So that's that line of code. The next line of code is as lola.swim. So lola.swim takes the yard swim and adds what that parameter is. So 0 plus 50. It checks, is that greater than 200? It is not. So we just add 50 to yard swim. Okay. So all of these um, changes we've done so far, we've done our ref, we call this our reference variable or a calling object, and that tells us what object we are either accessing or modifying. So since we use Lola, Lola is going to be using the swim method that accepts a parameter that's an integer. Okay. So that specifically tells us where we go, and then in that method tells us what we actually do with Lola's data. Okay. Another example, jesse.swim30. So it takes his yard swim, and it adds 30 to it. Okay, now 25 plus 30 is 55, which is greater than 50. Okay, now because that's greater than 50, remember what we do inside that um, inside that method. If it's greater than 50, then our yard swim just becomes equal to whatever is our, in our event yards. Okay, so that's why 25 is gone, and it's equal to 50 now after that line of code. The last one here, lola.swim50, again, we take the yard swim, what it currently is, add 50 to it, so we'd be getting 100. Is 100 greater than 200? It is not. So her, Lola's swim, um, yard swim, is just going to get changed to 100. Our next line is Jesse's event completed. So Jesse, in events completed, it checks to see if event yards and yard swim are equal. Is Jesse's instance variables equal? They are. So that's actually going to print off true. Then we go over to Lola. Is Lola event yards and yard swim equal? They are not. So that's going to print off a false. Okay. All right. So just an example of how we make 
our class and then here are some lines of code and how they change our classes um, or excuse me how they change our data um, from those objects created from those classes. Okay. On the AP exam you're just going to be asked to write the class itself so what we just created just the class. Um, you might be given code like this to help you figure out how the methods are supposed to be run. Okay, but you actually won't have to necessarily trace through code like this on the AP exam for that question in the free response section. Okay, that brings us to the end of today's lesson. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next time.